Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Muscle Intelligence Podcast. I am your host, Ben Bukolsky. Thank you for being here. I realize you have an incredible amount of information being thrown at you. I do my best to provide the most valuable information for people looking to optimize body, mind, performance, health, and ultimately guys over 40 has become something close to my heart. Because to be honest, I am one and I understand what you're going through. I understand what you're going through from the perspective of the struggles, from the time constraints, uh, maybe from the physical limitations that maybe you're experiencing from time to time. Maybe it's a little bit harder as we age. So I'm, I relate. I get it. I've been there. I've pushed my body to the highest level at some point in my career. Certain things broke, right? Certain things hurt. I tore some muscles. I had some injuries. Certainly early in my bodybuilding career or you know, even before I was considered a bodybuilder, I, I did some damage, right? I did some structural damage to my joints. I'm paying the price sometimes for it now, learning how to train around it. I think it's an absolute blessing. I think all of my injuries and all of my obstacles and my challenges are blessings to me because it allows me to come back and learn, right? Without challenges, we often don't grow. We don't learn. So every time I face an obstacle, I'm, I'm, I'm grateful. And, and I've definitely been going through some challenges lately. Physically, you know, I've got some injuries. Yeah, many of you may or may not know I tore both my calves in my career, which is odd because of how big my calves were. Uh, or maybe that's why I tore them, but I tore them both. And that's given me some challenges. But again, we're learning to work around it. It's been an absolute blessing. So today's podcast is about the 14 reasons why you're not building muscle. I thought it would be interesting for us to go into the challenges you're facing and help you guys overcome them. And so after having worked with literally thousands of people over the last gosh, 23 years now I've been training people. And since retiring in 2016, I've been working with a small group of men, high achievers. And, and, and I work with people who are poor and want to get good, right? I don't want to say poor financially, but like doing poorly and want to get to okay, right? I work with people who are already exceptional and they want to get to world-class. So they want to get to their best, right? They're already doing very well. They're doing a lot of the things right. And the unique thing that I bring to the table is I've taken my body and mind to a level most people will never understand, right? Most people will never be able to explore that or certainly if they're not intentional about it. And so I can identify the obstacles before you do, before you see them. I can understand what you're capable of more than you can, right? And that's maybe one of the things that most of my clients will attest to is the standard that's acceptable within my community is very high, not because I'm arrogant, not because I am hugely demanding, but simply because I see what you're capable of, right? And like, why wouldn't you express the greatness that lives inside of you if you can? And so many of us never get to see that or experience that. And I think that's a shame in life. I think never pushing yourself in something is a huge loss for most men, right? Certainly women too, but you know, I, I obviously um, relate most to men. And so I encourage you, regardless of what it is, like explore the boundaries of you, explore the boundaries you set in your mind, right? Or I should say outside of the boundaries you set in your mind. You know, the, one of my most quoted statements is, you know, greatness lies outside the walls we set in our mind or we create in our minds. And that's just the truth. And so one of the things that I do as a coach is I, I push you outside of your walls. And so on today's podcast, I want to explore these 14 things that are ultimately holding you back. And the first one, because it's a beautiful segue, is the standard to which you hold yourself, right? Your standards will always dictate your end results. And sadly, most people are accepting mediocrity. It's unfortunate to me that men just allow themselves to conform into mediocrity. Why? Why Why do you accept the participation trophy, right? Why don't you assertively pursue your best? Wouldn't that be useful, valuable? I'll tell you why I think it happens. One, it starts at a young age. Don't allow yourself to put other people down by being good. That makes sense. And then as we get older, it just kind of becomes this conformity mentality, right? I'm just going to do as good to, to as the people around me, or I'm just going to do as good as I need to to get by, right? I'm just going to do as much work as I need to at my job, uh, in my in the gym, whatever. Just enough, right? This just enough mentality has become the standard of the world. And it's sad. And there's communities out there that are not 
allowing that to happen. My community is one. We're building this, or at least this is my goal, is to build a community of men that are not allowing ourselves to settle for sub subpar standards, right? Below what you're capable of. And listen, you're never going to explore what you're capable of, right? Very few people in this world will ever explore what they're truly capable of because they simply can't, right? So you may not be physically fit enough to transform. You may not be physically fit enough to explore the, the depths of what you're capable of. Certainly not without years and years of progressing and training hard, right? That's really what I do. When I take on most clients, I work with them for a year and I want to build first a strong base and then we're going to push hard and see what you're capable of. And usually it takes three to four months before we can kind of get you fit enough to where like, okay, now we can really see what your body and mind are made of. And then it's the ascension. It's like this constant progression toward a worthy ideal, right? And so... The first thing that I'll say you got to change, you got to become aware of is your standard to which you hold yourself. And so how do we change a standard? Well, probably the people you surround yourself with is probably the greatest way because the likelihood of you thinking other than the way you've always thought is very, very small, right? Thinking other than yourself is hard or impossible, perhaps. So find someone or a community of people who are eager and willing to push you and not from a perspective of egocentric drive simply from a perspective of, of care, right? That's one thing that I say that uh, the reason I'm a great coach, not because I'm arrogant, you know, and you can whether or not I am, I don't know, but uh, because I care. Like, I actually want to see you express as much as you want to express. I, and it, I'll say, if I'm someone who cares about your results more than you do, then we're not a good fit. And so if you care about your results immensely and you're willing to do whatever it takes, then, you know, that's the type of person I work with personally. Not that this is a pitch down that path. Again, remember 14 things that are holding you back from building muscle. The first one, and by far, is your standard, right? And here's the thing. Most people think they know what they're doing. And if you think you know what you're doing in fitness, you will always fall to the level of what you, your standard, right? Or what you think you know or what you do. And if you want to get better, you go to somebody who can do it better than you. If you're serious about getting results, find a community of people who can push you. And, And here's an example. Uh, of you think you know what you're doing and, and maybe you don't. Like everyone seems to think nutrition is the number one piece of the puzzle that they're doing wrong. And I'll say with almost a hundred percent certainty that it's not your nutrition. And after working with thousands of people and it's just not like, why are you eating poorly? Right. That may be a better question to ask is, yeah, your nutrition probably sucks, but why are you eating poorly? Why are you compelled to eat crappy junk food? Are you, is it, you know, stress eating? which is very common. Is it mindless eating? Well, then is the nutrition the problem or is it the mindlessness? Or is the, is the nutrition problem or is it stress, right? So why don't we fix those challenges first and then the nutrition just falls into place. No people that I know train really well, like mindfully train and eat poorly, right? Or that's usually the case. Very few, like sometimes it's we slip up for sure. But in general, if you're someone who uh, is mindful, if you're someone who is stress-free, the likelihood of you eating poorly is much less. So maybe the nutrition isn't the problem. Maybe the nutrition is more like the light on the dashboard, right? Think that through. Moving along. Number two, you're inflamed. So way to think about muscle building, and I say this often in my community and my coaching calls and, and webinars that we teach, your body on the outside is a direct expression of the hormonal milieu on the inside or the hormonal, uh, you know, biochemical soup, we'll say like this, the inter, the interplay and interaction of all the different hormones in your body express what you look like on the outside. They, they combine to express what you look on the outside. And so if you have certain hormones that are predominating over time, then your body will take that shape. Example, cortisol, belly fat, estrogen, typically butt fat, right? Um, you know, low testosterone, typically you get flabby arms, things, things like that. So if, you're, if your hormones are, you know, however your hormones are expressing in the body will become the reflection of the external body. So if you want to change the external body, you have to address the hormones. Now, obviously bodybuilders like myself, if I'm being honest, have done this for many years and uh, cheated, right? We're like, hey, I, I know I can train really, 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 really hard, which for most humans would just drive cortisol through the roof. But I can take testosterone now. Testosterone becomes my highest signal. And then we are able to train as hard as we possibly can, as hard as we want, and still grow. 
Whereas a natural athlete couldn't do that because the body simply would over be overrun with cortisol stress, uh, stress hormones like adrenaline. So we have to be aware of that. Like how much can my body tolerate and still have elevated testosterone, elevated growth hormone as the default, right? So if I'm, if I'm constantly chronically stressed, cortisol is elevated, adrenaline is elevated, maybe insulin is elevated, then my body will start to look like that. And this is people who train really hard and don't get the results that they're after, right? And I'll say, I'll just say re- really hard in quotations because most people think they're training hard, probably not. They're probably training in one type of training system and that's not effective. And if you don't remember what I'm talking about, go listen to the last solo cast I did because I talked all about the different training systems that you could subject your body to. So inflammation comes from crappy food, comes from stress, it comes from alcohol, comes from pesticides, plastics, and pesticides and plastics are rampant in our food supply, in our water supply. Um, my suggestion to you, so if I give you a takeaway, eat real food for 30 days. Try it. Eat less, less far as like the variety. Eat you know, meat and plants or maybe just meat and try that for 30 days and see how your inflammation numbers look. See how your testosterone numbers look and, and see what it looks like. Will certain things go up that are potentially quote unquote negative? Maybe. But in general, you're going to see a significant improvement in body composition, significant improvement in energy, significant improvement in focus, performance, try it. So that's number two. Number three, you're overstressed. Again, inflammation and, and, and stress are definitely correlated. But why are we overstressed? Now, here's the thing about stress. Stress is a physiological response to one of two things, a psychological event or an event in reality, right? So we can become stressed simply by thinking, or we can become stressed by an event that happens in life. And here's the thing. Most of our stress isn't from an event in life. Some things, of course, are, but most often it's our perception of the event. It's our reaction to the event, right? So if, I, if something happens like, I don't know, someone does something to upset me, the event is one thing, which Dr. Rick Hansen in his amazing book, Buddha Brain, Buddha's Brain, calls uh, the first dart. And our reaction to it, our perception of it is what he calls the second dart. And our objective is to eliminate the second dart, right? Don't stress about it, right? Learn to be grateful for things as they come rather than letting yourself stew in it and placing blame and becoming a victim to circumstances. So being overstressed is huge. And my, my First suggestion is like, you got to learn to change your perception to stress. Got to learn to control it. Stress is inevitable, right? We don't want to require or request a life free of stress, but suffering is optional, right? It's a really good quote for you guys to think about. Stress is inevitable. Suffering is optional and suffering is completely within the realm of your control, right? You don't have to suffer through any perspective. And if you guys want to study that concept a little bit, I suggest reading Stoicism. So some Epictetus, some Marcus Aurelius, it's a really good place to start, to start understanding how to shift your perspective away from this victim mentality and start taking complete responsibility for your, your life and in your situation. And three things that I suggest everybody do with respect to managing stress, if you want to remember, breathe, walk, meditate every day. Right. Breathing intentionally before you eat and as soon as you wake up in the morning will change your life. It will change your body's ability to be resilient to stress. Right. So stress is inevitable. I want to be more resilient to stress. I want to be able to experience it. Be like, yep, I feel it. I know it's there. I'm good. Right. Not rather than allowing stress to kind of take you, take you over, take over your body and your mind. You know, it's this, this like proverbial closing into the walls around you, which seems to happen as people age. And it's not a par for the course situation where like, oh, you're getting older, so you're going to become more stressed and cynical. No, like learn to control your stress, learn to control your perception and ultimately be intentional about it. You can't allow the world to paint your canvas. You simply can't. You need to paint your own canvas. And that metaphor is I wake up every day with with a blank canvas. It's completely unpainted. And if I allow the world to put its colors on my canvas as soon as I wake up, That's going to paint my entire day. Instead, I'm going to paint my canvas with my consciousness, what I want to put on there in the morning, meaning I'm going to intentionally meditate. I'm going to intentionally breathe. I'm intentionally train. I'm going to intentionally create my mind and decide who I'm going to be. I'm going to decide what goals I'm pursuing. Every morning, paint your own canvas. Don't let somebody else paint your canvas. Number four, sleep. 
I don't have to, I don't have to beat it at horse. You guys know how important this is. Please guys like prioritize sleep. And here's what I've been doing lately to prioritize sleep. This is, this is relevant. I've been doing some fasting, but it's, it's what we'll call reverse fasting, which is like most people fast in the morning. I actually fast in the evening. I tend to not consume any calories after, well, I won't say any. Here, here's what I typically do. I consume 80 to 90% of my calories before 1 p.m., sometimes even before 12. And so I get 80, 90% of my calories in. I usually don't eat in the afternoon. And then I'll have a light dinner or a light snack around 5 or 6 or 7 p.m. It's very light. Maybe it's a shake or maybe it's some berries and, or, or sometimes nothing. And, and that for me has been miraculous for sleep. I, I not only sleep uh, deeper, I wake up feeling uh, recovered and uh, regenerated. Now, um, I wouldn't av- obviously necessarily advocate that for someone who's looking to gain maximum muscle. This needs to be situationally specific because if your goal is maximum muscle, you probably want to stimulate protein synthesis more throughout the day. But I would still significantly front load my calories in the day, certainly my protein, keeping it high in the day. And then maybe, um, you know, four hours before sleep, I would stop food or something like that. All right, number five, while you're building, not building enough muscle, you simply don't move enough outside of the gym, right? So many of you guys go to the gym and and gosh, I have so many different mental models around movement, but like movement in the gym is one single type of movement, which is often very linear, very rigid, right? So when I train, like I have to be rigid, I have to be hyper rigid, don't I? I have to be like solid and, and, and like unmovable. And that's great, but that's also going to create more of a rigid, unmovable body. So I need to, or I should want to balance that with a degree of fluidity, right? So what is fluidity? I want to be able to dance. I want to be able to move. I want to be able to walk and run, box and play and jump. All of those things happen outside of the gym. The, gy- the gym is about creating force production and force output. What we do <clears throat> outside of the gym, or maybe in the gym sometimes, is creating uh, a body that moves well, right? So guys, don't just myopically focus on building muscle and losing fat because your body will break down. Ultimately, if you want to build muscle and burn fat for the rest of your life, you need a body that's capable of doing that. And that doesn't just mean, oh, I'm going to squat and deadlift the bench every week. No, you got to maintain mobility. You got to maintain tissue quality. You got to maintain cardiovascular function. You got to do all those things. And how much? I don't know. Right. It depends on who you are and what your goals are. And so if your goals are, uh, I don't know, living long, then think of it like volume knobs, right? Like I, I like to undulate the volume of my strength training and weight training and undulate the volume of my cardiovascular training, which means I just like one week I'll do four weight sessions and one week I'll do six and the next week I'll do three. And, you know, I'll usually be consistent for a month or something. And then I'll, I'll, I'll change, you know, one month I'm prioritizing boxing and yoga. Next month, I'm prioritizing getting strong and muscular again. And it's this, you know, that's the undulation of it. Move more outside the gym. So if you guys want a standard, you got to walk at least 10,000 steps a day. You got to, you got to get that morning sunshine, which is obviously another one of our points here, why you're not building muscle. You got to move. You got to move your body. And walking guys, even though it sounds like exercise for old people is, is truly a gift. Like it's the, it's the most important, one of the two functional things we do. And, and one of the two most important things we do as a human, right? Breathing and walking are the only two functional things we do as humans, ultimately, right? If they're dysfunctional, then you're going to ultimately, everything else you do on top of it is also dysfunctional. So learn how to breathe. And that sounds odd, but learn how to breathe. It's, it's definitely a skill and learn how to walk and walk often. Don't neglect walking, right? If you're not, I, I do an intentional walk. I don't want to say hundred percent of the time, but I'd say 90 to 95% of the time, every single morning, I'll go on a very long walk. I mean, at least an hour. Sometimes I'll just keep going. Sometimes I'll do two hours because I'm like, I feel good. I got a great audio book on this morning. I was listening to a, a hormone um, webinar from Dr. Thierry Hurtog, who's a genius. If you want to understand hormones, there's nobody better in the world. I was listening to that. I was like, yeah, let's keep going. It's a long one. So let's keep going. And so I was learning and I was walking and moving and in the sunshine, I had all these great benefits. Uh, all right, moving along. Um, so uh, reasons why you're not building muscle for men over 40. Well, as I, as I briefly mentioned earlier, your hormones aren't supporting growth. So there are 10, and there, there may be more than this, but there's 10 that I consider physique hormones, right? And co- that's in quotations. Things that directly impact your body, your, your physique. And again, there's, there's hundreds of hormones, but these are the 10 that seem to have the biggest impact on body composition. But again, I'm going to offend some people here because I'm leaving some things off the list, but these are the ones that I think are most important. I'll go through them quickly. 
testosterone, obviously, growth hormone, IGF-1, thyroid, estrogen, cortisol, adrenaline, insulin, leptin, ghrelin. And again, there's more, but those are your primary ones. And so the ratios of each of those in the body directly impact the way you look on the outside. And some people genetically have better ratios for sure. And some people genetically have poor ratios for sure. But that doesn't mean that you can't do the daily necessary lifestyle interventions to change it, to change your ratios. Cause you absolutely can. You absolutely can. You're just not doing it. And so if your body doesn't look the way you want to do, you have to change something. You have to change the ratios of these hormones. And so some people do this exogenously by administering hormones. Fine. That's your choice. Some people do it naturally with lifestyle interventions. That's great too. I suggest everyone, regardless if you're using exogenous hormones, optimize your natural hormone anyways. Why? Because ultimately it's not just about, just like food, it's not just about what you consume. It's about what your body utilizes, right? Hormones are the same way. So if I take a bunch of testosterone exogenously, some people respond really well. Some people respond terribly. And a lot of these things are within your control by learning to, to uh, implement the lifestyle interventions. So I won't get into the details on this uh, podcast about those 10 hormones, but I am doing webinars within the muscle intelligence uh, ecosystem on understanding these webinars, ultimately understanding transformation for men over 40. If you guys are interested in that, you can always join, you can head over right now and join the Muscle Intelligence Facebook community uh, where we have over 20,000 people engaged on a consistent basis on the muscle intelligence principles understanding health and muscle building and fat loss and longevity, and all these amazing, valuable areas of life that we focus on. So it's literally just, I don't, actually, I don't want to say it, but it's Facebook. Uh, muscle intelligence community is, is where you want to go. You can also go to muscleintelligence.com slash webinars if you want to join one of my webinars. And again, these are all webinars guided at men over 40, men over 35, a lot of guys who now are coming under under 40, but men over 40, and how to optimize ultimately your body, your mind, your performance, your sexual performance, your drive. How do we optimize life? And this is not, like I said, I'm not like someone who's doing poorly and I want to do okay. This is for people who are like, I'm checking most of the boxes already. Like I'm doing pretty good, feel pretty good, and I want to be great. And I know there's greatness within me and I want to express the greatness within me. And it's, and I don't want to die with that greatness in me. You know, I want to express it. And I think, gosh, having a community of men who are, who are pushing each other is such a gift. Uh, moving along. So I said the, that hormones are a huge um, concern. And there's one other one here that's with, related to hormones. Oh, yeah. Your mindset isn't aggressive. And now, isn't it interesting how aggression gets such a bad rap in our society? Man, you're supposed to be aggressive. And it's just learning how to direct it. And I fought this battle for a long time. I was a very aggressive child, very aggressive teenager, even aggressive into my 20s. And I learned that aggression was bad. I, you know, because I saw when people express their aggression, they express it on other people. And I was like, I, was like, well, I don't ever want to do that. That's bad. I'm going to hurt people. Like, I, I don't want to do that. So I just repressed it. And I, and I almost went the opposite direction, like being really nice. And I felt like if I just was really nice on the outside, people will think I'm this really nice person. They won't see this like aggression, this, you know, this monster that I have inside of me. I was afraid of it. And then learning throughout my life that aggression doesn't take the form of like hurting other people. Aggression takes the form of like pursuit or like a tool if you need it. It's not something that controls me. I control it. And when I learned that as a man, it was such an empowering tool to say, oh my goodness, this aggression is not a crutch. It's a gift. It may be my greatest gift, right? It's the, it's the shadow, the darkness that lives inside of me, but it doesn't have to control me and I don't have to hide it. I can be aggressive, just not directing it at people or unless they need it or unless, unless they're trying to hurt me or my family, right? But in general, my, my aggression is directed toward my goals or directed toward my training or directed to, like, toward, you know, really anything that I choose it to be rather than being a victim to it. And so guys, learn to be aggressive. Guys come to my training camps. I encourage aggressive training, encourage aggressive behavior because it's part of your masculinity. It's part of your primal divine nature. Like you're an animal. Fucking scream, right? Be a man. And, and that's very much frowned upon in our society. But, because, but my thing is create a container where this is acceptable. Don't do this on the road or in a fight with your partner, but like create a container where this type of behavior is acceptable. What the gym, 
the jujitsu uh, mat, the boxing ring, right? Like those types of places, why men are so pulled to that type of stuff is because it's part of your DNA. So train that, train your ability to be aggressive and do not denounce or renounce your masculine nature. All right, moving along quickly. I only got a few minutes left here to go. Focus. So gosh, isn't everyone's focus that of a flea, right? Seven seconds is what you know, social media has made us. Seven seconds of focus is an average. Gosh, guys, train focus. How do you train focus? I can't meditate. Great. I can't, therefore I must. Right? If it's something you feel like you can't do, sit down and do it. Right? So train focus. How do we train focus? Well, literally train your, or train yourself to stay in, in 45 to 60 minute work blocks. Train yourself to, uh, you know, focus while you're training. Train yourself, like training could be an amazing way to train your focus. Train meditation. Train your brain's ability to focus on a single objective at a time. All right, moving along. Cardio is probably not where you want it to be, right? Train your cardio. Be intentional about that. Cardiovascular fitness is not just about fat loss. Cardio is one of the biggest levers in improving recoverability. Your ability to recover between sets and between workouts is highly correlated to cardiovascular fitness. If my cardiovascular fitness is higher, my ability to recover between sets and between workouts is much greater. I can train more often, build more muscle. Cardio is not just about fat loss. Train your cardio and about heart health, about penal function, right? That stuff's important, man. I want that, those things to work for a while. All right, moving along. Chances are your mobility is poor. Most guys over 40 have poor mobility. You got to train mobility. I suggest guys start taking yoga classes. Hot yoga classes are a really good way to accelerate mobility. Uh, and now I'm no yoga class is perfect. I'll be honest, right? Some are great, some are not. Uh, and everyone has its strengths and weaknesses. Find one that works for you. Two more. And you guys know these ones. Next one is going to be your form, your training. Most people I work with are okay, right? And if you're okay, you're going to get okay results. And that's fine. If you're good with that, that's fine. But for me, I would rather do the best I possibly can and do less, right? Or do the best that's possible and do less. So as I notice my form waning, boom, we got we to bring it back in. So guys, if you think your form is good or good enough, you're wrong. It's not. like. It leaves so much room for interpretation. And most people's form, to be honest, is abysmal. It's, it's somewhere between really bad and mediocre or really bad and yeah, I guess good. So you have such an opportunity right there. And now guys, I don't say this to be negative, right? I say this to point out the opportunities for progress. If your form stinks, awesome. That's great. That means we have leverage. We can, we can move the needle that because like once you get to the point where your form is great and you have all these boxes checked, well, guess what? There's only one way to go and that's working harder. And most guys try to do that in the beginning, but they can't, your body can't recover from it. You don't have the, the form down. So your body tends to get injured. So like these guys, you simply can't just work hard. If working hard is your, your only lever right now, you're, you're in big trouble, right? Well, I shouldn't say that. If you've got all these boxes checked and you're really good at all of them, and working hard is your lever. Great. Cause now that your body's prepared for it. So, uh, final one, I think maybe arguably one of the most important and one of the ones that maybe you haven't heard of before, or at least haven't heard of in this context is your breathing massively influences your ability to build muscle, not only your performance in the gym, but your ability to produce energy minute to minute, day to day out in the gym and outside of the gym, your ability to produce energy is uh, controlled by your breath. Your ability to control stress is controlled by your breath. Your posture is controlled and influenced by your breath. Your uh, ability to maintain spinal mobility, shoulder mobility, and pelvic mobility is influenced by your breath. If you're someone who is taking breath, not taking breath seriously, you're making a big mistake. I promise you're making a big mistake. Um, so ladies and gents, there's 14 different ways that you can change your ability to build muscle right now. And these are all challenges that are facing guys over 35. Now, notice there's three in there that I didn't mention that most of you are like, why is that there? These are the most important. Progressive overload, calories, nutrition, and programming. Those are three that I intentionally left off the list because as I said, and maybe even working hard, right? Most people are like, oh, you just got to work hard. Bullshit. If you don't check all these boxes first, working hard is not going to work for you. Just won't. You get some results, but you'll always hit a plateau. You'll be one of those people like, I'm working really hard, not seeing the results I'm after. That's why you're not checking all these other boxes. 
So is programming useful? Absolutely. Once you've checked these boxes, are, are, is nutrition really important? Of course it is. Once you check these boxes, is progressive overload really important? Sure it is. But if your form sucks, progressively overloading bad form doesn't help, right? So I intentionally left those things off the list. While I don't think they're unimportant, I think that they just get overemphasized in society and people aren't recognizing the benefit of all these other things. So ladies and gents, thank you for being here. Uh, thank you for always being a listener to the Muscle Intelligence Podcast. I appreciate you guys being here. Today's podcast is brought to you our amazing friends over at Real Mushrooms. Real Mushrooms are back. Sponsor the podcast, realmushrooms.com slash Ben for the highest quality mushrooms on the planet. Now, I say that confidently because I've I've searched. Uh, you guys know that I really care about the quality of everything that goes into my body. I don't want to put things into my body that's that's anything less than the best because when I put in something that's low quality, like hey, I'm going to go buy my vitamins at Costco, like, whoa, 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 hold on a minute. Like the, the quality of the, of the ingredients matters. You know, vitamin D is not vitamin D, right? Like there's different levels of quality. And oftentimes these low quality supplements are coming with additional things in there, fillers and binders and, and, and toxins that your body has to detox, your body has to cleanse. We're trying to do something good for ourselves. We're doing something great. Like, and, and instead we're doing something bad. So real mushrooms is a, is a vetted, 100% organic, incredibly high quality mushroom company that I've been working with for gosh years now since 2000, I don't know, maybe 17 or 18, been around a very long time. And they still continue to come back because you guys support them. So thank you for supporting our sponsors, realmushrooms.com slash Ben. You're going to get 25% off your first order and 20% off thereafter. This podcast is also brought to you by our friends at Organifi, organifi.com slash muscle. Most of my listeners now are using Organifi because they try it, they love it. Incredibly good tasting, incredibly nutritious. They do have a new pumpkin spice gold flavor, which is uh, reishi, turkey tail, really calming. So it's, an, it's a great alternative to like sleep supplements or melatonin to calm you down in the evening so you can recover from your hard day or recover from your hard workout. It's a beautiful warming and anti-inflammatory blend of spices that truly tastes amazing. Organifi.com slash muscle guys. Thanks for being here. And also remember to check out muscleintelligence.com slash webinars. If you want to learn this information and so much more coming at you. And if you're not already part of the muscle intelligence Facebook group, head over there right now and join. Cause I'm in there all the time doing lives, doing webinars, doing cool stuff, teaching you. And that's another place you can learn about working with me personally or working with my team. Have a great day, ladies and gents. And we'll talk to you soon. Thank you so much for tuning into muscle intelligence. If you enjoyed today's episode, please be sure to share it with at least one person you know. Make sure you're subscribed so you never miss an episode. This podcast is for information purposes only. The statements and views on this podcast are not medical advice. This podcast, including Ben Pikulski and the producers, disclaim responsibility for any possible adverse effects from the use of information contained herein. Opinions of guests are their own, and this podcast does not endorse or accept responsibility for statements made by guests. This podcast does not make any representations or warranties about guest qualifications or credibility. This podcast may contain paid endorsements or advertisements for products or services. Individuals on this podcast may have a direct or indirect financial interest and products or services referred to herein. If you think you have a medical problem, consult a licensed physician.